So now let's talk about how exactly we screen these patients. Early diagnosis is key. And, you know, when I was preparing this lecture, I was looking at different prevalence amounts of NK in the world. And, and uniformly across the literature, while the numbers are very low, the consensus was that it's probably going underdiagnosed because we're not screening for it as earlier. And so let's talk about screen out, screening details. So first, our patient history. And really isolating the etiology can be found before you even put your patient behind the salt lamp through the patient history history, kind of hiding in your senses to look for NK. Second is our slit lamp evaluation. Third is tear production. And for me, Shermer's testing is very important. I say this to always try to do it without the anesthetic. And the reason why is because what we're looking for is a basal layer of tearing without the reflex tearing involved. However, in NK, we also want to check to see with that anesthetic component of the corneal nerves, how that tear production is, is in impaired or affected. Next, corneal sensitivity measurements. Um, there's qualitative and quantitative measurements that we'll talk about. And lastly, while not used frequently, um, corneal in nerve imaging can be very helpful when you are monitoring your patients. So first and foremost, as providers, let's talk about the slit lamp. So we've had many patients that we've put behind the slit lamp. We look at their cornea, it looks like a disaster, and we pull that slit lamp away, and we ask the patient, how do you feel? And the patient shrugs their shoulder and says, I feel great. And that discrepancy between the symptoms and the signs are classic when it comes to neurotrophic keratopathy. So first and foremost, I always assess the lids and the lashes, looking for lid anatomy, looking for debris debris extensions or makeup on the eyelids, blepharitis, looking at the quality of the eyelids. So floppy eyelids and easily vertebral or also the tension of the eyelids. Next, I'm looking at the conjunctiva and we'll talk a little bit about the use of dyes in the conj, but chalasis as well as signs of allergy can be very indicative of the inflammation levels in the ocular surface. And of course, most importantly, the cornea. And this is where looking for staining and scarring is important. Lastly, I encourage you all to take a step back and looking at the blinking function as well as the rate of the blinking. So moving on from the actual utility of the salt lamp, let's think about the use of dyes. And I think Traditionally, we all think, well, fluorescein will identify any corneal impact, which is true. Um, when I think about fluorescein, what I want to see is how is my epithelium as well as my tear film looking? So I'm looking at both frank staining as well as breakup time. But what I find is that the quality or the amount of staining and the staining location can help differentiate dry eye disease versus neurotrophic keratopathy. So what I find is any type of inferior staining is more traditional with ocular surface dryness, whereas more diffuse or central staining is associated with NK. In addition to that, I encourage you all to also pull out either Rose Bengal or Lysamine Green because the helpful role of these dyes, while can be slightly more toxic, is that it helps you identify desiccated cells. So here we're looking at staining on the conjunctiva, on the lid, and you'll be surprised as to how much Lysamine Green staining you can pick up on the cornea. And so again, the quality of the staining and the location of the staining is very important to do document. Now, when we think of uh, Rose Bengal versus Lysamine Green, I traditionally use Lysamine Green only because I find that it's less toxic and better tolerated for my patients compared to Rose Bengal, especially if the patient already has some concurrent ocular surface disease, they're going to be very sensitive. And so that burning effect from the Rose Bengal ends up throwing off some of my assessment. So this is a patient of mine that has limbal stem cell deficiency, um, has worn contact lenses for many years. When I did corneal sensitivity testing on her, found that she actually had a, a much reduced response and so diagnosed her with NK. And on one side of the screen, I have the lysamine green staining. On the other, I have the 
fluorescein and I've put up a ratten filter to help kind of identify the fluorescein. So while I don't have any frank staining here, what you can see is kind of this ridge of the limbal stem cells kind of protruding towards the center. And when the patient's blinking, you can see areas of irregularity on that tear film. Now, interestingly enough, when we take a look at that same area on the left with the lysamine green, we're seeing some pickup of staining along that ridge, which tells us there's some desiccated cells there too. So I encourage you all to use both types of dye.